everyone. I hope you're feeling good and bright and cheerful this morning and ready to go move with the Lord this morning. Yep, indeed. Now, first of all, I'm going to give you the Bible readings for today. And I think we'll begin with yeah. some of them. Because yesterday, we didn't get to it because of all other interesting topics that came up. Things that I raised, diversions, but important. There were Colin diversions. Okay, so these are the Bible readings for today. And today's date is the 6th, 6th of, of May. May. There we go. 1 Samuel chapter 2, Jeremiah chapter 40, Psalm 15 to 16, and Romans chapter 2. So um, I would like us, Amanda, if we could just go to 1 Samuel 1 and 1 Samuel chapter 2, because yesterday's reading, 1 Samuel chapter 1, uh, and then in chapter 2. So Obviously, uh, if you've already read this this morning and you're ahead of the game, by the way, the full list of our scripture readings, our Bible reading program is on Revival Times. You've got to go to Revival Times Extra for the moment. May Revival Times is in the extra section, Revival Times Extra, and we're putting more and more articles together, but that's where you will find uh, this Bible reading program. And so in chapter one, we have the story of the birth of Samuel and how Hannah had no children. She was the least favored uh, and, and she had a, a real sense of failure and there was a lot of persecution and she was downgraded in the eyes of other members of the family. And anyway, we'll come to that story. Then Samuel is born and Samuel is given to the Lord. So what I'd like to do, Amanda, is read Hannah's prayer in chapter two, then we'll go a little bit back okay. over the story. I know it's a great favorite of yours, the story of Hannah and Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 2, and Hannah prayed and said, my heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you. There is no rock like our God, no more talk so very proudly, talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble bind on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread. Those who are hungry have ceased to hunger. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and rises up, raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might shall a man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Against them he will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He'll give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. So this is a tremendous prophetic prayer. It's almost like a psalm. It's a prayer of praise and thanksgiving. And the language here is um, highly poetic, kind of exaggerated language. What, what, what I mean by that is the words here are true, but they seem to be speaking of greater victories than Hannah's victory of being unable to bear a child and then having a son in answer to prayer. It seems that uh, this is a, a picture of a bigger battle. Um, and, and this is something for me which I find very fascinating. I have known in my own life that many of the smaller battles that I have been through, that we have been through, are part of a bigger drama. 
it's not just about me and you or Amanda and me or, or Amanda and her needs or problems over the years or mine. It's not just about our little problems. Actually, these little problems that we, we are like, like a piece of a jigsaw, part of a bigger picture. And here, Hannah is saying, look, Lord, so will all your enemies perish. So will all your righteous sons and daughters. They will flourish and they will win out over the wicked. There, there seems to be a kind of uh, sacred drama taking place here. And, and, and also a spiritual drama, because we know that behind the scenes are great spiritual forces. Our enemies, really, in the New Testament understanding, are not people no. with bodies. They're not it's flesh spiritual. and blood. They are spiritual enemies. And so the great drama that is taking place as we, as we get up in the morning and face our trials, uh, when we throw off sickness or or we persevere through times of tension and doubt, or when we uh, decide that we're not going to over, be overcome by evil, but we overcome evil with good, when we decide to bless and not curse our enemies, when we live in this new covenant, uh, what, what, what we're doing, what we're experiencing on the earth in our day-to-day -day struggles is actually just the tip of the iceberg. And if you could go beneath the surface, or let's use the other picture, if we could go above into the spiritual realm, we would see that there is a great spiritual drama, a great spiritual battle that God is writing his story in the heavens as the, as the heavens interact with the earth and as the powers of darkness come against the righteous men and women of God. So that's a rather grand introduction. Mm. But if we get down to Hannah, what Hannah was feeling, uh, because that's where the drama plays out in our lives. We're not conscious of angels and archangels and principalities and powers. We don't get always or very often an open vision of the spiritual battle. We just know we're having a bad day. We just know that we're going through a rough time. We just know that there's something that we intensely desire and it's not happening. And so at that time, we can tend to think that God has forgotten us. But has he? Does he ever forget his, his he never children? Forgets us, no, God never forgets us. We are always in his plan and purpose. However difficult the situation is, God is right there with us. He never leaves us alone in any situation. He walks beside us all the way through whatever situation we find ourselves in. Yeah. So we, we explained a bit about Hannah, because um, Hannah was not the only wife of her husband. Um, his name is Elkanah. And he had two wives. One name, wife, well, one was Hannah and the other Peninia. Penina. 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 It's hard to say. Let's say Penina. Penina. Okay. That'll do for this morning. It's not the official the official pronunciation. Now, Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Uh, and um, Elkanah would go up to the temple every year to worship, offer sacrifices to, well, it was actually the tabernacle at Shiloh it was not the full temple. The temple was not built at that particular time, but it was the house of the Lord. And um, Elkanah would sacrifice and give portions of the sacrifice to his wife and to and Penanai and all her sons. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion. This is chapter one. You can be following it here because he loved her, although the Lord had closed the womb. So now uh, Hannah, Hannah had her husband's love and affection. We don't know what the tensions and pressures are in polygamous situations. Um, I, I've counseled a, a young woman uh, many years ago who was absolutely broken because her mother was not the favored, favored mother in a polygamous relationship. We know back in these days, polygamy was allowed. Uh, 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 there was, was possible to have more than, <clears throat> more than one wife. It was as if God... Uh, turned a blind eye on that for a period of time. 
because of cultural pressures and, and, and the standards that people had to rise to. But of course, in God's progressive revelation, he brought us back forward, back to the original plan, one man, one woman, for this reason shall a man leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife. So anyway, but let's not uh, go into the uh, details on polygamy. But here we have um, this woman who had her husband's love, but she didn't have children. And she longed to have children. Now, we would not say that your femininity or your womanhood or your, your integrity as a person, male or female, depends on whether you produce children or not. No. We would not say that. But we do recognize that at this culture, in this time, the children were at the heritage from the Lord, as they are indeed today. But, but, the, but the point is, is that, is that it meant so much more to them in their culture <clears throat> not to have children. It was, it was almost a bereavement. Can you uh, say a little bit more about that, what it was like for Hannah, what she must have been going through? Well, I can't imagine what it was like for Hannah, but I imagine it was extremely painful because her husband's other wife had many children. Each year she had more children. And yet Hannah, who longed for children, could not bear a child. So she must have been feeling, well, I, I really can't imagine. She was pretty desperate, pretty desperate in her spirit. But the remarkable thing about Hannah, she doesn't give up. No. She doesn't forsake the Lord. She calls out to God in her distress. And that's a great lesson to all of us. In our distress, it's easy to forget God. But Hannah focused on God and poured her heart out to God in the midst of her distress. Yeah. And we know the end result was God honored her prayer. Yeah. I mean, there, there's so many spiritual lessons here. Yeah. Basically, she provided a son for the house of the Lord. Yes. That was what's the real need. There was a need for the son, a son for the house of the Lord. And Samuel became a great prophet. He was brought up in the house of the Lord. And she said, Lord, I will dedicate him to you. And she did. She kept her kept her promise. But just a few other things before we, we, we pray into this situation and take take some prayer requests this morning. Um, what, what I noticed here was that in her need, she was mocked. She was mocked. You know, is there a time when you're struggling with something? And, <clears throat> and, 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 you know, you don't know why God isn't answering prayer. You're struggling with that. And then people look at you and say, oh, what have you done so wrong? You know, I, I remember somebody saying to us when we had terrible difficulty with our, our second daughter who finally passed away at age 16 because of, of brain damage, which happened, you know, uh, through medical negligence. And I remember somebody saying to, to me, to my face, you must have been a very wicked person. For this to happen. Now you can imagine, on top of your suffering, I never I don't know if I ever told you that uh, uh, back in those days, to keep keep those hurtful things from you. But the point is, is that you're you're suffering. You you you're confused. You you don't know why God has allowed this. You 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 just you don't understand, and you know that you're not entitled to a happy life. You're not entitled to have everything the way you want it, but you don't understand, and you're suffering, and you're crying out to God, and then somebody comes along and uh, and and mocks you. I think often, I think off, not often, but I've noticed and heard and had it said on many occasions, people who are extreme faith people, people who believe have extreme faith views. Uh, often believe that it is our lack of faith that things don't turn around, especially yeah. when we're praying into healing and things. I have encountered that where people have said, well, you need more faith, more faith. Yeah. And that doesn't encourage one no. because we might have as much faith as we can possibly have in God, well, as we understand it. Yeah. And yet the situation doesn't change. Mm. So the, the thing that really impresses me about Hannah mm. is she didn't give up. No. She, it wasn't her lack of faith. It wasn't anything to do with what she was mm. not mm. doing. It was the fact that she clung on to God. She moved closer to God. She mm. cried out to God. Mm. And I think for me, when someone has said in the past, well, you need to have more faith, mm. I think that is in, in, rather than discourage me, it has encouraged me to really hold close to God yeah. because he knows my heart 
and your heart. So that's right. And a healing is not on demand. No. Healing is on command. Yes. God's command, not our demand. And all the healing promises that are in the scriptures will be fulfilled on the day of resurrection. But and until then, we get wonderful foretastes. But it happens as God chooses and pleases and works according to his timing and he's a faithful God he'll fulfill his promises and as Amanda says we don't give up we hold on not in a attitude of demandingness no we must we must walk in faith yeah. uh, we don't lay our faith aside we must walk in faith but it's not our faith that produces the end result no. it's God working through us and with us that produces the end result absolutely so that's true. But then, so uh, Hannah was was judged. She was judged, uh, and this is terrible when you're going through suffering. People judge you for what what you're experiencing. And this is very bad. This is not godly. This is not the Lord. This is not the Holy Spirit. This is the enemy talking. And Hannah's closest rivals were the ones who were making her life more miserable. And then, as you know, when she was praying, even the, the, priest, the priest Eli misunderstood her. There she was. She was praying intensely in the temple or in the um, in in uh, Shiloh, praying and praying. Uh, but but she was not praying out loud, and so it looked it looked like she was just a bit strange. And uh, and he thought that she was drunk. He misjudged her. Eli misjudged her, and then also misunderstood her. So when you're being misjudged in your time of need, it hurts. It really hurts. When, when, when you're doing everything you can and people are misjudging you, they're telling negative things about you. They're telling evil stories about you. None of these things are untrue. You're misjudged on top of what you're experiencing. And then when, when you're simply crying out to God, you're misunderstood. They misunderstood. You're, you're drunk. What's the matter with you? These, these things are terrible. However, however, God sees and he answers prayer. And that's exactly what happened. And that... Childs was born and his name was Hannah. Uh, sorry, Samuel. his name was Samuel. And that means I've asked for, for him from the Lord. God heard me. And his name means heard of God. Heard of God. I want to rename you today spiritually. Samuel, you are heard of God. And so there is a Samuel in my ear right now. Uh, our, our technical uh, technical director. So Samuel, you are a Samuel heard from God. Can I have an amen in my ear? <laughs> amen. Okay, we got that. All right. So we're going to pray into those situations. Um, and um, now we have had a couple of um, um, messages coming in. And so I'll let you peruse them this this morning. And, um, and I, I will pray into this. So if you don't mind perusing that, I, I will focus on prayer. Amanda will be listening, but she will also be watching so that we can interact with you this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we present our needs before you. And we confess at times uh, we feel that you have not heard us. Uh, and by hearing, we mean that you haven't granted our request and we're prepared to trust you. Trust you, Lord, for you know best. And we are prepared to seek you above all things and before all things. We're prepared to do that. And we know that as we put you first, and as we seek your face and your kingdom and your righteousness, we can trust you for all these other things. But Father, our, our legitimate desires, these are second things. The first things are first. First things are you, your glory and your kingdom. Second things are the blessings that come to us. And, and we ask you for them. We thank you for those blessings. We enjoy them. But we know at times, Lord, we must wait. But we wait in faith, not, not unbelief. And we wait in perseverance. And we know that you are the faithful God. So we pray, Father, that you would hear and answer the needs of your people at this particular time. And as we do that, Lord, we pray for the broader needs of uh, the church and the ministry and what you want to do for us in our lives. We lift up to you the whole ministry of London City Church, Kensington Temple, 
And at this time, Father, we pray that you'd continue to be the source and supply, the supply of finance, the supply of encouragement, the supply of strength, the supply of growth, the supply of multiplication. We pray you'd raise up leaders, more and more leaders, people who will reach out to others. And so the, the church can grow and the church can multiply because this is your house. And we want to take care of the needs of your house, just as Hannah took care of the needs of the house of God in her generation. And so we want to put your house first as we pray for your house, for the blessing of your house, the peace of your house, the unity of your house, the prosperity of your house. We pray for the blessing of God upon the house of God, especially that expression of it to which we are, 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 are committed, the Kensington Temple London City Church. We pray, Father, for the members of the church, that they will come under the blessings of the house, that as they link up to the house of God, that their houses will be blessed Amen. and that their ministries will be blessed and that their desires will be met and they will know what it means to walk very closely to the Lord. But we pray for those, any person who is in any kind of bitterness of spirit, anguish of spirit, because they are crying out to you, crying out to you, crying out to you, and there seems to be no reply. We pray, Father, that you will bless them, that you will speak to them, and that you will give in your timing that not just even what they ask for, but over and above what they ask, according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. 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 Yes, we've got a couple of uh, praise requests, just praising God for a new day and for the blessings of the day. And uh, thank you to Pamela, who is providing food for the food hub, dried goods, food for the food hub. And the one prayer request we have this morning so far is from Asha. She asks for prayer for her grandmother, who's had a stroke in hospital. So we're going to pray for Asha's grandmother. Father, we just lift this dear lady before you this morning, Lord. She's in hospital in the best place for treatment. Father, we pray that you would just um, enable the medical and nursing staff, Father God, to provide for her the exact treatment she needs right now. And Lord, that you would just intervene with your expertise in this entire situation. And Lord, we pray for um, Asha's grandma to be healed completely and restored, returned to the family in full health in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Now, uh, you can continue to send in your texts and WhatsApp messages to 0757 It's on the screen right now, 07570 And there is also a parcel care a hotline that you can call at any time during the day. And that number is 020-7908-1700. 020-7908-1700. That will be up to in a moment or at least by the end of the program um we have got a great song forever when we're list listing the songs that we have ready for you this one i chose for you forever it's a great song but uh before then here's the grace and now may the, the grace, grace of our lord, lord jesus, jesus christ, christ and, and the, the love of god and, and the, the fellowship, fellowship of, of the holy, holy spirit, spirit be, be with, with us all now and forever and, and surely Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. stars they wept the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him Final breath he gave 
God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, the war on death was waged, the power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake, the stone was rolled. Overcome. We sing hallelujah. 